Welcome back to Buckeye TV, Gray Edition. Almost everyone these days has a cell phone and uses it quite frequently. Some studies have shown that cell phone use affects the performance inside as well as outside the classroom. Ryan Mann takes a look at cell phone use at Ohio State. Do you ever see that student walking into you with a cell phone in their hand looking down? Or do you see that student who is on their cell phone during class and not paying attention to their professor? Studies have shown that too much time on your cell phone can cause impaired vision, brain cancer, loss of hearing, heart risk, stress, and impaired concentration. So not in class, I would say a lot. In class, I would say it depends on how interesting the class is or how boring the class is. <laughs> um, I feel like a lot of the time in my major classes, I usually try not to stay on my cell phone, but if it's just a GE, I feel like I usually doze off and are on Facebook or Twitter or something. <laughs> but out of class, I'm on my phone a lot. Um, during class, I would say it depends on the class, but probably 10 to 20 minutes per class. Um, and then out of class, um, I would probably say 50% of my day. Not only are students wasting money in the classroom by being on their cell phones, but they also are affecting their health. I'm Ryan Mann, and this is Buckeye TV. Thank you. Ohio State is home to many unique and rare collections. Many rare manuscripts and books can be found on campus, ranging from antique photographs to Shakespearean-era books. McGrace Landwehr dives into this collection for Buckeye TV. The Library of Congress for having one of the, if not the best, collection of American fiction um, in the country, which is saying something. Our collections are so wide and diverse, stretching back to ancient Babylon all the way to things produced yesterday. Our literary archives are really, really sensational. Our early Shakespeare materials, um, our photography collections, there's just a wealth of material here. All of these things are fantastic teaching and research uh, resources for students and faculty here at OSU. The Rare Books and Manuscripts Library at Ohio State offers a large collection of materials. Librarians and curators work to preserve these pieces while still making them available for use. This is done through online access, class visits, and helping students who contact or come into the library. Um, we are contributing quite a few volumes from our own collection towards that much, much larger project. My battle is to constantly try to convince the high school students that this is their collection and they can create the books that they have for the last couple hundred years continue to be around for several hundred more years. Really got to be balanced with our primary mission, which is getting a lot of good students, faculty, and other teachers to come in and actually actively use our collection. Reporting for Buckeye TV, McGrace Landwehr. Around the Ohio State campus, there are a few movie theaters for students to go to. Akasha Porsche talked with, talked with some students about their feelings on the apparent lack of diversity in the film selection. I had the opportunity to speak with a few students on the lack of diversity at the Gateway Film Center. I guess I wish there was more types of movies to watch from, from different cultures and not just your traditional movies that you see in every theater. So it would be really interesting if the Gateway had more films from different cultures. It's actually really interesting because the Gateway goes out of their way to say that they want to show certain films for certain reasons. Um, for example, during October, they'll show like classic horror films or, you know, which movies that haven't been out for like 30 years, they'll go out of the way for them. And it just says something, I think, to me that newer films, fresh films, um, can't be shown. Well, I think that it um, decreases, obviously, the diversity of its audience. Um, if it were to show more African American films, I know, like, as a freshman student on campus, I had to go to Linux to see a lot of movies that came in um, instead of utilizing the campus that's right here on utilizing the theater that's right here on campus. Um, so I think that it would probably pick up traffic as well as other, you know, Columbus community members would come to Gateway if they were showing other African American films that are generally only shown at Lennox. I'm Akasha, reporting for Buckeye TV. With Halloween weekend just behind us, many students probably enjoyed an adult beverage or two. Ryan McGlade explains one adult drink students maybe shouldn't confuse consume. An energy drink and alcohol. Pretty common beverage. Pretty dangerous, too. There's a problem with this when you mix that with alcohol. So alcohol is, is a sedative, 
Um, if you, if you drink too much, you're eventually theoretically going to pass out. Um, I, I guess uh, there's a concern that if you're drinking a lot of caffeine with it, it can kind of keep you up enough to, to drink more and get into that dangerous blood alcohol level. Um, if you're, if you're kind of abusing both of them at the same time. According to the CDC, the most dangerous part of this drink combination is the fact that the caffeine in the energy drinks masks the depressant effects of the alcohol. Some students believe people do not take this issue seriously. Um, there's a pretty strong party culture going on here and I think that people are a lot more worried about other health issues aside from just mixing energy drinks and alcohol. Other students believe the only way to raise the awareness is by personally seeing the effects. I don't think students really react that well to authority. I think it's more of a thing where if they see it going on, then that's when they're more responsive. So I don't know is if it's um, an issue with their peers, and I think then they'll take start to take it a little more and more seriously. Reporting for Buckeye TV, I'm Ryan McLean. When we come back, we'll have some news from the world of business. And later, we'll learn more about the rivalry between Ohio State and that team from up north. Stay tuned to Buckeye TV.